Do y'all feel it? Y'all feel it? I feel like something is happening. Something is about to happen tonight, today, this morning, this afternoon, depending on where you are around the world. This is a great day. This is a great day. Come on in, come on in, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Focus Marathon. My name is Antonio Cheeks, and I'm here with the lovely Karen Cheeks, and we are here just to keep on serving you guys, serving you guys and serving you up some focus on the plate, and uh, we are digesting good new nuggets every single night for 26 nights, and can I tell you? It has been phenomenal. You, you, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it has been exhausting, but fun. <laughs> Man, it has really been uh, interesting to share this mm -hmm. with you, to go through this and, and just enjoy the speakers and the presenters that have been coming on and bless them for coming on yes. and just sharing with us and impacting the audience. And I've, just learned, I've learned so much. So much. It's, we, it's been amazing. We actually was tossing and turning last night on yes. that focus on your niche yeah. part from last night. Oh that thing, Mr. Ralph Hastings Spain came out and blessed us on niching down and the courage it takes to do niching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you did not see last night's conversation, please check it out from the YouTube that. channel. It's going to have you just thinking about how can I go narrower, narrower. Yeah. Is that a word? You 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 starting <laughs> to sound like me now. You you're right. You you I think there. I think I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> but how we can narrow down our focus and then watch God open up opportunities yes, when we do it. Yes, yes, that yes. thing. Ooh, it was we, good. Yeah, was, we had somebody say it was a paradox to, yeah. to go narrow, but have a greater, you know, such a bigger impact yeah. which, by going narrow. That was actually, that yeah. stuck out to me as well. So here we are another night. We are on, oh, let me let me catch up. Let me catch up. I'm so excited. I forgot the, that we're in the show. We're on day 17. Day 17. 17 of our 26-day marathon, 26 nights, afternoon, morning. We are on day 17, and we actually are picking up steam. You know, they say when you when you're running, a long time ago, I used to run and sometimes I would kick in the second gear. Mm -hmm. I would get my second win. Mm -hmm. And some, for some reason tonight, I'm getting my second win. Oh, that's good. I wonder if it has something to do with the speaker. For you know, it, it very well may. It very well yeah, may. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm it, pumped up. I'm ready. This is going to be good. This yeah, be good. I can't I can't wait for tonight's conversation. You know, I feel like that every single night, though. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I don't know what have, it is. So Every, we are yeah, so, so so many people who um, have given us their yes and joined us in this focus marathon to share their wisdom, their insight. It has just been a blessing. Been. We're getting feedback from those who have tuned in live and those who watch the replay. That reminds me. Welcome to the audience. Hello, hello. Oh. Thank you all for joining us tonight. It's yeah. so good to see you on day seventeen of the focus marathon. Whether you're uh, tuning in from YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook. All, everybody, everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Lottie, Dottie, Lottie, everybody. Dottie, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, baby. Go ahead. Just talk to the people. I yeah, ain't going to say nothing. No, I ain't just... going to say nothing. Just talk to the people. <laughs> we have been having a blast. We have, And yeah. uh, But we, we, you know what thing? We get our energy from you. You that are tuning in, commenting, making comments, going back. And even when you go back and look at the past videos, you're still engaging and we just love it. We thank you mm -hmm. because this, all we're doing is just serving. Yeah. This, again, I keep saying this is nothing that was planned out. We just wanted to do something and to give. We want to be go givers. Yeah. Not go takers. We want to be go givers. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. We're just giving. 
And so thank you for hanging out with us. And for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, continue to hang out. Yeah. Something absolutely. to do instead of binge watching on your favorite uh, reality show, binge watch on some good nuggets, not <laughs> chicken, chicken nuggets. nuggets. We're not doing chicken nuggets. We're doing good <laughs> nuggets. So well, binge out and hang out with us for a while. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And listen, um, so tonight, I'm not going to give away exactly what we're talking about just yet, but listen, invite somebody, let them know that you're on this, uh, that you're on this live stream right now. Invite somebody to come tune yeah. in. If it's somebody who uh, maybe desires to be married, somebody who's still single, but dating, courting, whichever lane you might fall in, tell them to come on and get some, get some good nuggets. Not chicken nuggets. Not chicken nuggets, but get some good nuggets, you know, to help in this journey. And even if you're in the very beginning stages of your marriage, this is a conversation that you're going to want to tune into. Yeah. I I got my, my phone here ready to take notes. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. The people are waiting. They are. All right. Let's go. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Day 17. We're starting to get silly now. Day 17. Here we go. So we have a guest coming up tonight and they're going to be sharing with us. You know what? Let's just go into it. All right. So our guest for tonight, we have um, Josh Parker. He's married to the lovely Anastasia. And y'all say a prayer for Anastasia. She's not going to physically be with us because she's a little under the weather, but she's okay. So keep her in your prayers. Um, but this is about their story and some of the things that they've learned along the way and how God really tore their lives apart mm -hmm. individually and through pain and loss, rebuilt them from the ground up. Upon meeting, their process from friendship to courtship to marriage involved properly uh, operating in singleness, honoring God throughout the process to marriage, and watching as he promoted them to their purpose-filled life where you see them today. Through purity, boundaries, mentors, and a fervor for Christ, they set the standard on what it means to court God's way. Their passion to see other couples do it right has spilled over into the world where dating and one night stands has become the norm. They introduce a new way of thinking with a vibrant, animated, and principle-led foundation that not only makes you laugh, but changes your life forever. And they've only been married this coming December. It'll be five years. Woo. So they've learned a lot in yes, the first four, yes. four and a half years of marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Josh Parker to the Focus Marathon tonight. Show them some love in the chat, please. Y'all just went all out, didn't you? you brother, know. brother, welcome, welcome to the Got show. Fired up. I'm ready. I'm ready to run for real now. <laughs> Let me tell you, man. Uh, I am so honored and humbled that you would take the time out to come out here and bless us today and bless the people who are listening. Young couple, really doing their thing, doing ministry together, serving together. And uh, the book. The book, y'all. This thing right here is a masterpiece. The way they did it. Look, I got I got to flip it around. It is a phenomenal design and a phenomenal message. Yeah. 
and we want we're going to dig into that a little bit but man you're you're currently are in texas Yes, and uh, you and the lovely uh, Mrs. are now residing in Texas. Welcome. Say hi to everybody, man. Just, just say hi to the family. What's going on, Focus Marathon family? It's an <laughs> honor and a privilege to be a part of <laughs> this process. Man, listen, I'm not going to be here. I'm not gonna be before you long. You know how the preachers be saying, I'm not gonna be before you long, and then they give you an hour. That's right, that's right. Extra. Uh, you know, I just <laughs> I just want to get out of the way for the Coopers that's coming tomorrow because when I tell you they laid the smack down, um, <laughs> listen, I didn't know whether the smile or kick a field goal when I watched that game. It was all good either way. So it's good to be here, man. I just want to honor Antonio and Karen. You guys uh, really set the standard for what mirrors should be. You're my heroes in the faith. Um, so I definitely just want to say thank you. I've been through a lot of classes where you guys have taught and you taught us to refine our voice and find who God really has called us to be. And so I thank you for all that you've poured into people like myself. And I know my wife feels the same way. So big shout out to my wife. She's in the comments. Yeah, she's out there, man. She, she's she's talking. She's talking about the Coopers. Yes, the Coopers did. They did it. <laughs> so uh, Coopers, they on. They, they know to come back. They're coming back. As you said, is it tomorrow? Tomorrow. They'll be here tomorrow. Nice warm up for tomorrow. Uh, but man, brother, you guys, young couple, Mm -hmm. new couple, newlyweds. And that's what we're talking about now. What do you focus on in your first couple of years as a newlywed? Newlywed, How do you survive and focus? How do you get through? Especially, especially that first year, because there's a lot of trying to come together. Yeah. A lot of blending, you know, your lives. <laughs> Who's, yeah. Whose house are we going to do um, the holidays with? What mm. furniture are we going to keep? You know, what kind, you know, yeah. tell us how that first year was going and how are you able to start to come together and start to become one. And when you while you're doing that, how did you guys meet? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, before I lose my train of thought, it's a, a word that you use that's quite interesting, and the word is survival. Mm. So uh, typically, studies have shown that upwards of 20% of marriages end in divorce within the first one to two years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what, what we tend to see is individuals not fighting for the marriage, but fighting for themselves. When you think about marriage, Marriage is two individuals with their own personal systems. They come in with their own system and how it works, how they grew up, their background, whatever they've gone through relationally, right? And then they bring that into a marriage. But marriage is two imperfect people entering into a perfect union. When you enter that union, the idea um, that God had for us is to relinquish our own system and now create a new system that works for both individuals as we honor God, right? So um, this is so interesting and we'll get, we'll, we'll dive more into that, how we met. So, you know, my wife is, uh, listen, you know, my wife is, she's in the comments. So I know she, I know she wants to jump on camera. I have my own version of how we met, but I'm just, I'm gonna just give you the, I'm gonna give you the truth. Uh -oh, let, me, let me make sure I'm looking at the comments. Cause here we go, go ahead. You know, because I, I believe there's a scripture that says mm -hmm. you shall make you free. So listen, <laughs> my wife, uh, she disrespected me uh, when I had approached her. So how we met, we met in a, it was a, a cold day in January. And I, I made these meatballs for this event. She doesn't remember me, but she remembers the meatballs that I made. She loved them so much. She was just raving about them. But she didn't know the person that made them. She didn't even come to me. She didn't say, thank you. We're going to pray for it. Okay. So, Scroll down the line in June of 2016, I approached her at our church at the time, which is First Baptist Church of the Northern. I approached her. Um, I had had some interactions with her uh, before then. But um, this particular day was a beautiful day in June. And um, I was scared to death because Anastasia is actually the first woman that I have ever approached in my life in person. Right. I used okay, to yeah, do. We're going to get into that. We're going to get yeah. into that. Internet dating, y'all y'all pray for your boy. Um, but so I'm 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 getting myself ready. You know, I never done this before. I didn't know if I had game or not. I don't even know what game was. I maybe a video game. I might have done that. <laughs> um, and so anyway, I approached her, I walked up to her and I say, Hey, how you doing, ma'am? Um, she's like, and she's on the phone, she's doing one of these numbers. She's oh hey, you know, one of them get away from me because I don't really want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, she's like, Hey, and I say, Hey, you know, how's everything going? She's, she's like, everything's going well. And I was like, Hey, I, 
I'm wondering, I got a question for you. She was like, what's that? And I said, are you single? And she pondered for, for a couple seconds. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, cool, can you do me a favor? And she was like, what's that? And I said, lock in, because this is big right here. I said, do your research. So what I was saying to her was, I need you to start asking people about me because I'm coming for it. That's essentially uh -huh. the direction that I was going. Okay. And so it, it sounds good until I get to this part, you know, <laughs> and she's like, okay. She's thinking about me saying what I said. And then she's like, um, you need to know the Lord. Basically that's what she said. She said, you don't know Jesus enough to come at me in this manner. Um, now she can put in the comments how she has said it, <laughs> but that's basically how I had interpreted it. Right. Right. Um, right. So I didn't ask her for a number. I say, listen, I just want you to do your research, start asking people about me and, you know, we'll we'll see each other again. And I briskly walked off. Um, and after that, she well, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it there. And because, you know, then we're going to get some confliction happening. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So she could, she's still in throw a shoe mode. She ain't that far away. So, yeah, so that's, how we, that's how we got together. And, and then. Um, a month later, we went on our first date. I knew after that first date, I was gonna marry her. Oh, um, really? Knew. After the now, first date? Now, how did you know that? What, what, uh, what gave you that in inclination? You know, I can't speak for every man, but I think most men would say that when they know, they know. They, yeah. Um, and so we were in this place called Succotash, and you mm -hmm. might be familiar with it. Mm -hmm. um, we were there. We we're eating. It's at the National Harbor. And it was our first date. So I ordered chicken and waffles. She got chicken and waffles as well. And when we, the food gets to us, you know, I'm African American, amen, glory. So I pick up the chicken like a regular person. Time to get in, time to go in. Yeah. Right. I'm not playing games. I quit school because of recess. Okay. I'll play <laughs> games. All right. So I pick up the chicken and I start eating it. And, you know, Anastasia, I look over at Anastasia and she's got a knife and a fork. And I'm like, yeah, if you don't if you don't put that fork in that knife now and eat it like you know how to eat it, she's like, okay, and started going to work. I knew I was gonna marry her right then. I knew that was it. <laughs> wow, that was it. wow. Yeah. I, I I love the story. It, it it's similar to to our story. Um, meeting in the church, mm -hmm. and um, we both have different views, angles of how the story went. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll just, like you said, we'll just leave it at that. We we came together and uh, here we go. So so let me ask you this, man. So pe the chats are blowing up and we're going to get to those chats. I just want, and she said almost, he's almost accurate. I, mm. I love that one. Mm. Um, so you, you meet, you start dating. And uh, I want to get into baggage. When did you decide as a couple that you would start being totally honest with, with each other about your baggage? Mm -hmm. Was that something that was done before? And again, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm talking about is this dynamic book. If you don't get a copy of it, I, I don't know what to tell you. Get 10 of them because you know you got five or so single friends that need the book. The book comes from his take, her take, take. Mm -hmm. and they're actually doing it right now. He's on the screen and she's in the chat <laughs> with their take on the book <laughs> or on life. And uh, so what was it? Who was the brave person that said, hey, you know what? I got, we're going to share. Mm -hmm. We're going to share because most people, let me say, I say most people, a lot of couples, they can, they can do the interview process very well. Meaning, while you're courting, dating, you put on your best face. Mm -hmm. But y'all went beyond this in your book, man. I'm telling you, I'm reading your book, and I said, I can't, I can't read this no more. <laughs> I mean, it's just raw. Yeah, it's very transparent. It's very transparent. Mm -hmm. It's very truthful about your walk. Both of you guys had an interesting upbringing, encounters, but here you are together. Who said, all right, you know what, let's talk. And then you put it in on, on paper. Tell me, tell us about that. So um, let me start 
that by saying this, um, a wise man once said, uh, the heart walks, but the mind runs. Mm, okay. So in, in everyday life, you go through certain situations and circumstances that are going to kind of deter you from God. I came to Christ late in life. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I came with a pent up aggression. Okay. Uh, my wife is a totally different background. She grew up in the church. You know, she can speak to it in the comments, but the vulnerability piece didn't come until that relationship with God became genuine. Hmm. You you have to, you have to learn how to maintain singleness appropriately before you can open up to be anything with anybody, especially in courtship. And so if my relationship with, with Christ isn't genuine, then I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'll just use kind of what you guys are talking about that facade. I'm going to use that as an entry point to get through, relationships right. every time because I'm not comfortable with me. Mm-hmm. And so I have to have an identity long before I go into courting someone and into marriage, which is super important. But based upon how I grew up and that pent up aggression, I had to reconcile so many different things in my life as it relates to the past relationships. Um, my parents, I didn't see a successful marriage growing up. So, you know, that process of trying to understand what marriage is and how to appropriately operate in it, that had to come through knowing the scriptures and and getting connected with other uh, Bible believing individuals that shows you the path that you need to walk on in order to be successful. But all of that happens in singleness. I had to get that together long before I approached Anastasia. And, you know, just based upon the information that I, I shared in terms of how we first met, that that charge he gave me that I need to focus on Jesus. It, it prompted something in my brain that says, okay, I have to come correct. But really that's God saying, you need to come to me first before you pursue her wholeheartedly. And so that it caused a shift in the way that I thought. Um, I I really, I think the faith came from me approaching Anastasia because it was the first time I'd ever done it. And it was like, God, I'm doing a complete faith walk. Because Anastasia was, she still is way out of my league. She is all that in a hot wheel track. Okay. So when I approached her, she's doing stage plays, you know, everybody's surrounding her. She got all these friends. She's super popular. And I'm this random guy. Um, Mm. I'm I'm an introvert. Don't like speaking in front of anybody, but um, God took over that day. And so it built my, built my faith, but there is hope that gets kind of energy. It kind of interjects in that process of learning me. Like I have hope now that I've seen God do something, I have hope that he's going to continue to do it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And so as we moved into that courtship, it was easy to be vulnerable because we were both vulnerable with God long before we were vulnerable with one another. Mm -hmm. I knew who my, what my identity was in Christ. It made it so much more easier because I knew that everything that I've gone through, God ordained it. Mm -hmm. Right. So all things is, is providence. And so I wouldn't be who I am today had I not gone through what I had gone through. And so it, it just made it so much more simpler to just allow God to lead. And then we just follow. All right. Great. Look, me and Karen chopping at the bits for questions to ask questions, man. <laughs> well, I was so. going to say, so, so it sounds, so you just explained that you, both you and Anastasia were both in a place where you were whole when you came together, mm-hmm. but it was prior relationships where, um, you kind of learn some things along the way about, you know, either how not to do relationships, the fact that you had a need for God eventually, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, talk about, talk about where you were prior to getting to that place of wholeness. You don't have to give everything, but, you know, just kind of give us some sense Dude, of, of, please don't give everything. <laughs> yeah. no, they they, they got the to get the it's book the to book. get everything, yeah. you know, so I don't want YouTube saying striking us for something. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Um, so, so let me, let me put it this way. And so I think in, in every process to marriage, there is kind of like a a four point process and it comes right out of, um, first Corinthians three, actually first Corinthians three, six through eight. Um, the process where, you know, Paul is talking about, I planted a seed, Apollo water, Yes, Mm -hmm. God gave the increase. Mm -hmm. So the four part process that you have to really ask yourself, there, there are four questions. Um, what is your seed and what soil did you plant it? Okay. Um, how often do you water it or how often does it get water? Cause God is, is watering it. 
And the fourth one is a bonus one is uh, who is eating your fruit? Mm -hmm. So the question that you just asked directly relates to what is your seed? And so that seed planted in you is going to create that wholeness. But how do you get whole? So a lot of things that I put in the book had a lot to do with soul ties. And so I won't go deep into that because that's like a whole teaching. Mm -hmm. But what I will say, if you're not loosed from individuals, from situations and circumstances, then you're going to bring that key word into your marriage baggage. And mm -hmm. we're going to bring baggage into the marriage anyway. Because anyway. We're right. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a lot harder to navigate those first two years of marriage if you didn't reconcile those issues prior to marriage. And so in, in singleness, you have to understand that you're whole in Christ first so that when you get into marriage and it don't look like what you thought it would, mm -hmm. you're still whole. If I'm not getting, if my love language isn't being strong, okay? If it's, so my love language is quality time. And if my wife decides she don't want to spend no time with me, the way that I want to be spent time like, then I go to God for that. That doesn't mean my marriage is in on the fritz. You know, I just have a conversation with my wife. I would love to see more, more of this. Because oftentimes we, we look at marriage as a football game when we're on different sides. Mm. Um, mm. But it's, it's really about coming together and understanding that you're on the same team. And mm -hmm. operating appropriately in that process is really key. And so singleness is major. In fact, it's the most important thing. Because you carry singleness is a state, not a status, right? People think people look at singleness as, okay, I'm single, and they put it on their little, you know, you go on Facebook and you see the status, I'm single. Mm -hmm. Singleness is really a state. Even in marriage, you're still operating in singleness. God called you to do something specifically. He called your wife to do something specifically, your spouse to do something specifically, and then your marriage is designed to do something specifically as well. God gave you a calling long before your marriage came along. Like I knew who I was in Christ. Mm -hmm. God called me to do a certain, excuse me, a certain thing to honor him in that process. And so when my wife came along, not only am I doing that, but now I have something that I could do alongside my wife that's going to continue to produce fruit for the kingdom of God. And so you have to really navigate those soul ties. You really have to make sure your relationship with God is strong and have some spiritual disciplines in place that aren't broken apart or destroyed as you go through courtship all right josh you're, you're teaching you're wise beyond your years young man <laughs> look hey, hey uh people in the chat go ahead if you have a question put a put the letter q in front of it so we know to to like laser mm -hmm. we can see the q in front of the question josh this that's really smooth i i love because you know how people say hey you complete me <laughs> they're looking for somebody to complete them mm -hmm. And that's a recipe for danger. It sounds like what you're saying, um, because you're going to always be, you know, like dependent on that person making you whole or complete. And it, listen to your teaching. And I'm going to call it teaching because you're really teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's not really the, the approach. So someone who does not have your wisdom, where, where do they start? They're, they're dating now. They they might have one foot in the church. They, they might know some scriptures. Mm -hmm. But they still a little world worldly, you know, like I was coming up and um, Karen, like you said, we're, we're almost like a identical couple. We're just y'all a little younger than us. But Karen, if you if a church song come on, she know the words, all the hymns. And I'm like, you know, that song, you know, and 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 I'm totally different from that. So somebody's out there. What there's a young man, a young lady who's saying I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on my Boaz or mm -hmm. my, my, my woman to come and step into my life. What should they be focusing on now though? Okay. Yeah. So first of all, the Lord flat out, um, they need to have that relationship strong, but I'll say this too. So what I mentioned earlier is, you know, what is your seed? Um, so your seed comes from singleness, not marriage, right? Cause if you in marriage, then you're going you're going to be frizzled. The second part is in what soil did you plant it? So you can be a good seed in bad soil. Okay. And so what what do I what I mean by that is you could have you could really have both feet um, in the church, 
Honestly, mm-hmm. you can really you can know all this. Yeah, we've I, seen that. You, yeah. we, we see that. Yeah. My marriage is the same way. My wife knows every hymnal. I don't care which one. She know the numbers. Uh, yeah, number two hundred and thirty-seven. She knows right. what that is. I don't. <laughs> I know. You know what I'm saying? Give me that contemporary stuff. I can sing something, but I don't. Right. Yeah, all that great stuff. So, um, she she had great soil. Um, she had both foot feet in in the church, but there were things going on in her life that kind of corrupted the soil a bit. Mm. Um, for me, I, I was, I, y'all pray for me. I, I don't know. I, I had bad soil. I bad seed. I don't know. Mm-hmm. God, he did something new. He did a new thing mm-hmm. uh, when it came to me. I had to hit rock bottom in order to find him. Uh, Cause I had never, when I came to Christ, the way that I came to Christ was pretty radical. And so with that being said, I'm going to get slightly radical. Yeah. Go so in, question, go in. Question that you asked me, uh, what should they be doing? So let me tell you what I did, and we could go from there. Get your notes. One thing that I did and that I really encourage other people to do is to create a, the prayer list. It's a list that you that you submit to God, but there it's a list of wants, needs, and non-negotiables. And so um, a non-negotiable, they need to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, a negotiable is something that, you can put down that's that's kind of like a non-negotiable, except it can be negotiated. So let's say you need somebody that's OK with you moving about for your job. Right. And and but that may change in the future. You may not need that. So mm-hmm. that's kind of like a negotiable. So that's a, like a need kind of situation. And then the want is are things that you desire as an individual that are beautiful to you. Mm-hmm. So if you know, a lot of people don't like to talk about looks. But, you know, if if I want a curvy woman, right, then I'm going to let God know that, because otherwise, when I get into marriage, if I, you know, if I married, you know, ironing board, right, uh, you know, uh, six, uh, six p.m. He leaned into it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm just saying. Uh, he said I, a six p.m. Right, <laughs> uh, six sorry. p.m. Or, you know, straight up and down. If, right. yeah. if that's what you marry, then you're going to be looking outside of your marriage for what it is that you desire. Oh, mm-hmm. come on. And so you need to give these things to God. Submit them to him so that he knows the desires of your heart so that when God's blessing comes, you know what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you'll settle for anything. Right. It's like, OK, they got one or two, but they missing non- the non-negotiable. But that's OK, because she ain't a 6 p.m. You know, so so these are the things that you have to be mindful of and that you have to really you have to really consider. Another mm-hmm. thing is boundaries. OK, so, mm-hmm. you know, let's talk say about you, that, please. Yes. Yeah. So. um. I was pretty hard body with my boundaries. So, you know, y'all pray for me, but so I had the list. Anastasia came about in my life. She not only met the list, but she exceeded it. You know, God did exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask, think or imagine. Right. So Mm -hmm. now we're in the courtship phase. So in order to really implement the courtship phase appropriately, I had to implement sound boundaries. Now boundaries are not, it's not like a, an agreement between two people. It's a covenantal agreement between the man and God and the woman and God. These are things that you put on paper that says, God, I'm going to honor you by doing these things. They aren't, is, is nothing other than that. It's just mm-hmm. an agreement between you and God. And so when we came together and I presented these boundaries to her, they were things like, for example, I didn't get my first kiss until you know our, our wedding day, right? We didn't kiss in any way. Uh, we didn't go into each other's living quarters. So I never went into her because I, I know, you know, if, if anybody knows me, they know if, you know, if I get to kissing and hugging, then I'm going to get to licking and rubbing. That's, that's what I'd be saying. I sent a song somewhere. I know about it. Right. <laughs> um, so, so in order to ensure that that doesn't happen, mm-hmm. then I need to implement boundaries and then give God enough room to intervene in the event that I start to fall. A lot of times men, they hear boundaries and they think, well, we're just not going to have sex. But the woman is coming in the crib. They're staying the night. They're doing whatever they want to do except for sex. And, you know, in, in some denominations, y'all, 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 y'all pray for the body. Um, anyway, I'm not going to get that's too radical. I'm not going to say nothing about that. Anyway, <laughs> um, so, yeah. So these kinds of things. So we we stopped talking at 11 p.m. Mm. And we didn't talk again until 11 a.m. That's to ensure that God is on our minds when we go to sleep and God is on our minds when we wake up. I don't want to be talking to Anastasia at 2 a.m. talking about you up, you know, them, you know, them you mm. up. Right. 
Mm-hmm. This is what you're doing so I can, you know, slide over there. You know, that's right, not what right, we want right. to do. We want to honor God in everything that we do. And so boundaries were implemented to honor God throughout our entire courtship. And they were hard, mm-hmm. but it allowed for God's blessing to be upon our marriage in a way that we just can't fathom. Like it's, it's a, it's, it's an amazing blessing to see when you honor God, the result of that. So Amen. those are the two biggest things. So, so Josh, oh, okay. Wait a minute. Anastasia said we needed these boundaries due to our past and our baggage. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's She's good. conversating with us. I want to mm-hmm. make sure they get up there. Mm-hmm. So Josh, in the book, you mentioned landmines. I know part of this make that, well, I, I assume part of that was coming out of your military background, but you mentioned landmines, things to kind of look out for. Can mm-hmm. you unpack, talk about landmines for, with us? Absolutely. So, so landmines, land um, there's actually two ways that they really come into play, but landmines, when, when you're talking specifically about courtship, they're like, uh, they're like the red flags that mm-hmm. you see in an individual. So you're courting somebody. What the boundaries do is they allow you to see the person as God sees them. Once you allow sex to get into the situation or, you you know, soul ties begin to encroach, then you you get a blurry vision, a blurry picture of the individual. And you start bypassing certain things and allowing certain things to happen that shouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. So landmines are things that I I, kind of step on, but they need to be addressed in order for us to move forward. Mm -hmm. So if, if, you know, let's say my non-negotiable was she needed to be a believer of Jesus Christ, but she, and I find that out, but then I, she's putting on a great mask. But then later on, I find out she actually isn't attending church because she has church hurt or whatever. That's a landmark. That's something that I stepped on, something we need to address. I should not go forward until this gets addressed. And so this is we, you know, we work through those things. We allow God to intervene in those things. We allow God to show us these things as they come up so that they can be um, dealt with in a godly manner. Mm -hmm. So that way it doesn't mean that this person isn't for me. It just means that we need to have a discussion so that God can have his way in this process. And so those landmines, they really show you how to it's like your first kind of um, taste of what you can get in marriage. Because mm-hmm. you're not really in marriage until you're really in marriage. You know, you, right. think, you think you understand, but once you get into the marriage, it's a totally different dynamic. But exactly. Lines, they they kind of give you an, an understanding of how to process uh, conflict appropriately. Mm. So we have here uh, by your partner, it's uh, Anastasia. That's the beauty of courtship. You get to do your research and seek God's confirmation. confirmation. Mm-hmm. That's really key. Let me ask you guys a question. Thanks for sharing, y'all. Thanks for sharing, y'all. Um, what, what, what's, is there hope? A couple, they're courting, dating, depending on, you know, but they're already into the sex thing. They're already having sex. Is it possible for them to move the blinders or the, 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 the veil of sex in the, in the relationship to move past that so they can actually see each other who for who each other truly are? Or, I mean, what would be some advice? When I tell you, you teaching, y'all are teaching, man. So they already, they they pass, they say, you know what, we, we doing this. Because mm-hmm. we're going to get married. Mm-hmm. And you know that don't work sometimes, right? We're going to get married anyway, so we might as well go in and do it. So they're in it. It might be both of them are trying to turn it around. One person in the relationship might say, you know, I really, I think this is not right. So what what kind of advice, Anastasia, you can join in too. Um, What would y'all tell somebody that's already in it? They they, they, they gone. Yeah. So before I get into that, kind of want to address the courtship thing. So a lot Mm -hmm. of times we we throw that word out and people aren't familiar with it. Um, Or they may think that dating and courtship is the same thing. And, And to most people, it is. We kind of have a different definition of courtship. So mm-hmm. it's, it's courtship is like the period of development towards an intimate relationship wherein a couple get to know each other and decide if there will be an engagement, right? And then an engagement leads to marriage. Mm-hmm. But courtship is done in public. Dating is done in private. To say it another way, um, you court to marry, but you marry to date, right? Mm-hmm. So Dating should be done after you get married. It's done in private. You can do whatever you want to do. You know, you had a little date night. You do something strange to your wife. It's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, that should be happening. 
uh, shouldn't be happening prior to marriage. I'm clutching my pearls, not as yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, So, so let's talk about um, let's talk about that. So, first of all, let's there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus, right? So when you when you when you make a mistake, there should be no judgment. Things that you need to have in order to bounce back appropriately is seek God for forgiveness. Seek forgiveness to the individual that you, you know, have sex with, which I think is super important. Um, have really seek out a mentor couple that is invaluable because it mm -hmm. provides a word that most people take for granted, and that's accountability. Um, but really, that process towards getting back is going to be how de dedicated are you to fix you? See, when when, when we have sex and we hurt the other person that's major we, we we hurt the heart of god that's even more important but we also um find ourselves in a situation where we don't we start to kind of fragment who we are as people like we're, we're like okay well i don't because i've done this i feel bad about myself and, and that's you know I've, I've let god down and you start you start to really not like yourself mm -hmm. but I, I do want to say um max dupree says it this way um he says the first job of a leader is to define reality, be the last to say thank you, and in between be a debtor and a servant. So what that means is, so the first job of leaders to define reality, if I'm going to show my, as a man, if I'm going to show the wife that I'm, well, the individual that I'm courting, that I'm a leader, then I need to take the lead in what it looks like in forgiveness, in the setting the tone for the courtship from, you know, here on out. Hey, we had sex, but now we're going to change it. We're going to flip the script. I did wrong. I led you into the situation. I'm going to lead you out through Christ. We're going to implement boundaries. We're going to have accountability. We're going to honor these boundaries because we love God, not because we have an agreement between one another. And, and as you do that, God's grace will fall upon that, that, that courtship. And if you continue to honor him, you'll still see the fruit of a great marriage. You may see some, you know, you may have a little bit of frizzle. But you will really see the glory of God come upon your marriage and you won't you won't have that hardship that you see a lot of marriages have because you started honoring God prior to marriage. Amen. Yeah, I'm trying to bring Anastasia in like she's right there next to you with these with these comments. He's dropping that fire. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she got a uh, conviction versus condemnation. The Holy Spirit convicts us and moves us to reconciliation. But condemnation is from the enemy. It's never too then she late. says, "Never too late." I love that. It's never too mm -hmm. late. Never too late. Think about instinct, right? So, um, I, we so our brain stem, right? Not to get too deep, but our brain stem, stem a lot of our instinct. In fact, all of our instinct comes from our brain stem, and so a lot of things that we do naturally, we just automatically do it. We share that with animals, right? They have the certain that instinct that kicks in. What what sets humans apart? is the prefrontal cortex. It allows us the freedom of choice, the free will, how to understand things, how to make different choices. And so we're talking about focus, right? And so where is your focus? A lot of times it's how do I keep a focus on a certain thing, certain thing but sometimes it's how do I take a focus off mm -hmm. of something and put it to where it's supposed to be, right? And so as you utilize that prefrontal cortex, it's a beautiful thing because it's, it's powerful. God created it. And gave, he gave it to us. It's so powerful. He doesn't even control it. It's, it's free choice. Free it's will. Free control. will. Yeah. Right. right. He doesn't even control. It. It's given to us to do something with. And so that process to get to where Christ wants us to be, we call it, we have a word for it, sanctification. It's a process mm -hmm. to get to where you want to go. Right. And so. Think of so sanctification is any action or process that frees us from sin. And so if you're trying to get freed from sin, you had sex. That's a sin. Now, how do you come back from that? That process of sanctification. And so we talk about focus. And this is just random. You know, F-O-C-U-S. You focus on Christ to understand sanctification. So you have to refocus on Christ, right, to understand sanctification, to go through that process to where God can get the glory out of your courtship and in your marriage. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. 
I'm just, I'm, cool. I'm just like, man, this dude is, this dude is all right. Anastasia, <laughs> y'all are, y'all are on point. So you, you guys, can you, you want to say something? Cause I, no, I, go, go, go. You, now you guys, do you, you, you're teaching, right? Are you teaching other couples? Have you, I mean, cook, let me, let me just do this. Let me bring up uh, your website, fixing fractured families. families.com. Tell us about that. And so that's the, um, that's that's the fourth part of those four things that I gave. And so that fourth part being who is eating your fruit. Mm -hmm. If you really want your marriage to continue to flourish, even long past mentorship, my recommendation is mentorship. Mentor a couple that's coming behind you because what it does, it has a circular blessing associated with it. So a lot of things that we forget in marriage that are a blessing that marriage provides as a blessing, we get reminded of by individuals that coming in and they're still in that honeymoon phase. Like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, we're married. This is, a, you know, and you, you four, five, were you 13 years in now? You know, yeah, you, 13. you like, listen, hello, uh, today, you know, sometimes they, they know how to pluck them nerves and you know, it's going to be some, uh, my grandma used to say some smoke in the city. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be some smoke in the city. So fixing fractured families. Uh, we, we do, speaking but the our really our heart for what shields up ministries does is mentorship we mentor couples mm -hmm. through the process of which we took in order to get healed as singles how to uh, appropriately operate in courtship and how to start off strong in your marriage and so, uh, and so, catered, so josh go ahead unpack that how do you start off strong and you can finish if you wanted to but come back around to how you start off strong in the beginning of your marriage yeah so your marriage starts off strong by a strong courtship. Mm -hmm. And so you have to implement things. And a lot of times I'm talking directly to men because men should be setting the, the standard. They should be setting the tone for uh, their relationship. Um, a lot of times men don't provide a vision for the marriage. And so it's everybody for themselves in the marriage. And that, that system that we talked about at the beginning, there isn't one. So everybody's mm -hmm. fighting for their own system. Uh, but really what we're doing right as individuals is we're attempting to produce something for god that he had planted in the ground and now we're allowing it to grow but when it grows it pr produces that fruit and so that fruit is what you want to see in your marriage so what my wife and i do we do something called feedback friday i'll tell you what that is in a second um we also have date nights Starting off strong, you need to set the tone at the beginning. Have date nights. We have a date night every Friday. Every Friday we have date nights. In fact, we we um, we haven't done this in a while because we've been in a new place. But we created this jar, and this jar has popsicle sticks. And on the popsicle sticks, they have things written on it to do for a date night. All right. And then, of course, my wife put the amount of money on there and all that great stuff. And so every date night, you could pull out one of those popsicle sticks and whatever's on it, you do. All right. But you have to do something that works for your marriage, but you need mm -hmm. to implement that, right? So you start off strong with with that kind of, with those kinds of things, right? And so let me talk a little bit about what Feedback Friday is. So Feedback Friday is something that my wife and I implemented at the beginning of our marriage that allows for each individual to speak their heart on where the marriage is going. Mm -hmm. um, so just to kind of give you a quick synopsis of it, we do it every Friday. And what happens is my mouth is shut. My wife goes first. I cannot talk. I cannot respond in any way, not even with body language, because I know people want to get all sassy neck and talking and stuff. You know, you don't do none of that. My wife gets to share a heart on the, the three major things that plague marriages, money, sex and communication. Whatever she wants to talk about on, around those three things, she speaks her heart. She tells me how things have been over the past week. And I own it. Mm -hmm. So when she's done and it's my turn, I don't respond to anything she said. I just give her my thoughts on the previous week and the things that I would love to see improved or the things that have been going really well, et cetera. And we provide that information to one another, which gives us marching orders for the next week. And so it's a continuous improvement in our marriage. But if you start that early, what that does is it, it gives you things to do, but it also improves your communication automatically. 
-hmm. because if you know that you have a platform to speak to one another in the appropriate tone. You get to speak your heart the way you need to so that your marriage can flourish. And so those are the two yeah. big things for us. I was going to say, and I, it, I mean, what I'm hearing is that you've also created this safe space where you can share these things openly without fear of somebody shutting down or catching an attitude or being becoming upset. It sounds like you've created this safe space for this type of sharing to occur. Absolutely. And that that's that's major because a lot of times when men get it, especially men, um, we get into the relationship and we, we, we kind of clam up when it comes to our emotions and we don't know how to express them. We don't. We just, you know, whatever, you know, I learned it from Dr. Parker, Dr. Johnny Parker, whatever man doesn't talk out, he acts out. And so men typically act out certain things that they really should have just talked out and they wouldn't have had the repercussions in their marriage if they would have just done that. And so Feedback Friday allows for somebody like me to sit down, you know, something happened on Tuesday, it gives me time to process what happened. You know, we might have had a, a dust up, you know, a smoke in the city kind of situation. And Friday comes along and I'm able to speak to that problem or that issue or that conflict in a way that's loving and kind and appropriate. But um, I'm also, you know, seeking some fixing in that mm -hmm. marriage. So All right, look, man, shoot. Okay, a, we have a question, but I wanted Anastasia to, she said it was hard in the beginning, especially because we couldn't give feedback. I don't know how fast you can type Anastasia, but uh, and maybe Josh, you could do it on her behalf, unpacking that. I we couldn't give feedback. What what do you think she's saying there? Or yeah, how long did it take you to get into a rhythm with that? Yeah. Um, if and she, I'll let her speak to it. But you know, for me, it was more. It was a lot harder for me to do it in courtship because I can't give my wife marching orders, right? You know, like she ain't my wife yet. So <laughs> you know, I, I can't be like, hey, you know, the sex was bad. I, I didn't enjoy that at all because that's not happening, right? It's not. <laughs> It's not happening, you know, prior to marriage. Right. So, uh, you know, I think it was a lot harder for me um, to do that. But we we started that process in courtship. Once we got into marriage, you know, we had to kind of understand what the system was going to be because we we're just newly married. And so we're mm -hmm. creating that system that we talked about earlier. And so navigating money was hard because we didn't know what that looked like. We didn't know how to integrate two incomes and put them into one income and now is both our money you know we we grew up this is my money okay mm -hmm. um, you know every marriage my parents were in is my money uh, you know every every everything that kind of we see in the world is this belongs to me that's why people get premarital uh, uh pre what's it called uh, the pre pre -nuptial. Pre -nuptial agreement mm -hmm. they get all these great things that they think are so awesome but really all you're doing is saying hey i'm i'm prepared for a divorce mm -hmm. but that's not the course of action that you want to take Sometimes all it takes is communication. Have that conversation with that individual so you can really see the glory of God. Again, I go back to the glory of God because that's so important. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think Anastasia gave us uh, an answer. And then I want to get, we have a question for you. So we don't try to defend ourselves or become frustrated. Instead, we hear each other's heart and take time to reflect individually. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. I want to go. Uh, the goal is, okay. Okay. Man, she's she's typing. The goal, <laughs> no, but all the chat, I'm like, I can't keep up. Uh, the goal is to hear each other's heart, not fix each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Would you would you say that for a man, we're we're like to fix things? Like I hear what you're saying. Yeah, let me tell you what to do real quick so we can move on. Um, look, can can <laughs> try to hold? She try to hold it. <laughs> um, no, yeah, like, I think you know. I think it's unique to to a marriage. To, yeah, uh, sometimes you know. The woman may feel as though she needs to fix things. It just depends on the dynamic uh, of the marriage. But, mm -hmm. you know, I will say this. Jesus is the foundation. Right. In First Corinthians 310, I believe it, it says um, because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. So now others are building on it. But whoever is building on the foundation must be uh, very careful for no one can lay a foundation except on Christ, something of that nature. And so. Christ is a foundation as we build this building. When you really, if you think about that for a second, once a building is built, what's the intent behind of a, a house being built? Like, what do you do with it once it's built? Living People move in. in. You yeah. got to move in, right? Yeah. And so that's another kind of concept of mentorship. Like, somebody has to build the house so that others can come in and learn from it. And so 
you know, when a man, you know, my prayer is men see themselves as kind of the foundation of a family. So Christ is the foundation of everything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a man needs to be the foundation. He needs to be honored by how well his family is received, not by how well he's received. You know, that's that's what I believe. So when, you know, the women, women are the, the walls and the pictures and, you know, every, all of the decorations, they're the beauty of what a house is. And so they should be pushed forward. And when people see how strong a family is, they'll see the wife and how amazing that, that family is, but it's the, it's the husband that's really putting that house forward, putting that family forward. And so, you know, that's my prayer is that men see themselves that way. All right, let me get this question up here. Eva, I'm sorry that you was get, almost got pushed up, but I want to make sure I get this in. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel the pressure to have something to talk about every Friday? Uh, can you beg a Friday <laughs> off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so you know, there, there are absolutely some times where we may not have something like pressing. We may do one and it may be like, hey, you know, everything is good and, and whatnot, whatnot. That's great. Um, I will add that we all we always pray before we start feedback Friday. Prayer sets the tone for the rest of the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so it's, it's never a pressure because it's always a heart. It's really a heart posture. Again, I'll go back to something I said earlier on. The heart walks, but the mind runs. If you don't give the heart enough time to catch up with the mind, the mind will run away. And, you know, I'm telling you, you start thinking of things, you know, my wife, she doesn't love me or she she's seeing other men and, you know, she she's my enemy. All these things, the enemy will start putting in your mind and, and your mind will just run with those things. But Feedback Friday allows for you that space to hear someone's heart, to hear the desires of their heart, to really hear how to serve them and operate according to what they need, uh, what they desire. And so, you know, allow the mind, allow the heart to catch up to the mind by doing Feedback Friday or whatever you want to call it. You don't have to be Friday. It could be any day, but um, it's never a pressure because it's really a, a tool to keep your marriage strong throughout its entirety. Brother, brother, brother. Mm -hmm. Look, okay, let's take a moment. I know you can see as well. Uh, let's go through some of these, make sure we honor some of these comments. Let's just go on back all the way up to the top, man. And uh, except for, come on, brother, that was me <laughs> messing around. <laughs> So let's go ahead and play. If you see anything you want to have pop out, um, man, just that's Demika, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, y'all. She's in the house. Demika's in the house. Uh, hello, fam. You know, I saw my, the um, thing moving on the screen. I was like, "What is that?" That's that's me. I'm tired, y'all. Hello, fam. Uh, God, running high. I think that's when we talked in about getting our second win. Mm -hmm. uh, two snaps. And here we go. That was uh, the Coopers. I think I, I can see you guys and the Coopers doing a marriage uh, conference soon. Can y'all do it in Miami somewhere? Uh, oh, we're not worthy. We're not You're not worthy. worthy? <laughs> oh, when we first they got me across the cheeks when they were here, man. <laughs> oh, hey, fam. That was good. Hey, look, we got the community talking to each other. Y'all know I love that. I love when the community gets to actually, you know, just really be with each other and, and talk and build a bond. Uh, yeah, I'm here through the chat. Woo, woo. That's my boy <laughs> right there. Hey, your boy, your boy Donald Corbin is in the house. What up, Donald? Yeah, yeah. And uh, even them, they talking back and forth. We got, uh, when you, there's some more comments in it. Oh my God. Uh, Cooper came in and said, hey, he just giving you applauses when you came in. And then I just, we see Anastasia just really, look at y'all, they talking to each other in the chat, man, they ain't even paying attention to us. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> they talking in the chat. Oh, man. He said, don't call it a comeback. Oh, my God, this is good. And then James gave you a compliment, man. Man, look. Oh, God, I'm just here. I'm just a vessel, man. Appreciate it. Yes, LOL, I'm here. She's here. I'm surprised, Anastasia, you didn't get up. Get up and come on on this camera, girl. She was about to, about to throw them curlers out of her head and get to work. <laughs> hey, look, I, I know earlier you was getting ready to say something, and uh, James like, uh, be careful. Yeah, be I'm careful. Let that one ride away into the sunset. Yep. She complimented you and said, you got facts going on there. Yup, yup, yup. Yep, yep. Wait, I just said focus on Jesus. 
Uh, this is good. I'm just going through some of these because I, you know, sometimes you know people are just honoring you in the chat, man. And wow, wow, this is good. A you got some amens. Oh, I like this one. He's almost accurate. That was that was funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I figured that would happen. You said that's pretty good for us men. Yeah, you was talking, talking to us. I, I'm gonna I'm hurt my arm going down through here. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. So this was interesting. Anastasia said you took the lead in being more most value vulnerable first. Yeah. That's major. Set the tone. Like I talked like if, if we want, if you want a, a vulnerable marriage, you got to set the tone. Uh, as Where, a man, where'd with, you get that from? What? Which part? The, the leadership initiative to step out first. Uh, you you get that from? got that from you, brother. Bishop Cheeks. Come on, man. Stop playing, dude. Man, you taught me everything I know about leadership. All right. Go, moving on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell you everything. Leadership institutes everything. You know, it's uh, when it comes to I didn't I mean, it's not something that I uh, picked up on my own. I, I mean, I okay. didn't have a I didn't have any kind of example, you know, growing up. It, it wasn't until I, I got into the church and I started to to really um research individuals that I knew were, were, were Christ centered and started to model it. You know, you can be a mentor from afar. Right, Mentorship right. isn't always like I, I'm coming to you and I'm mm -hmm. asking you uh, to be my mentor. Sometimes it's just watching people, mm -hmm. seeing how they operate, seeing how they lead, seeing how they serve. And these things, you know, you take from different people to, to build who you are. And so absolutely. Hmm. Well, I, pre I appreciate that, man. Cause I, I didn't know, I, you know, I, you know, we just serve. Right. So, um, but I do want you guys to meet uh, the Coopers. We gotta work that out where you guys can can meet, whether it be via Zoom. We'll we'll set it up, you know, because you you guys are doing something. Amen. You you are you are wise beyond your youth. Man. Wise beyond you. I'm look. I'm like, dang. I'm like, be quiet, man. I gotta do these things. Man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, Matthew six thirty three. Seek the kingdom of God first, man. Everything goes fall into place like it's supposed to. Oh, okay. Okay. We had I had somebody had a scripture. Let me go here. Okay, let's go here. Mark had uh we got Mark. Hey Mark, how are you? Okay, when so much of what couples face today hammers at their confidence and conviction, this is good. It's inspiring to be reminded of what couples are capable of. Such impact from a couple so deeply committed. That right there, that's a good one. Amen. 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 And then we got uh, Donald said, hey, 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 Josh, a lot can be <laughs> learned from from uh, observing others. Mm -hmm. That's good. Amen. Let me do this, man. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, that's why we wrote the book. You know, a lot of people, they've, they've really given up on doing it God's way. Um, mm -hmm. But we constructed it around kind of having a matchbox. And in that matchbox... There's one final match in there, and God is just asking you to strike that final match and honor him with it. And so that's what we did. That's why we wrote the book, uh, because we, 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 we had faith that God would make that last match count. And he did. He lit a fire under us, and all we do is share it now. We just share it with everyone else. Mm -hmm. All right, brother. Look, uh, you talked about the book. I want to bring the book back up. It's two-sided. It is a really interesting concept. Because on one side, he's talking about his story or his take on it. And then you flip it around and the book talks about her take on it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's very good. It. Well written. Oh. I was like, I learned I learned a lot of things about you. Not only your story, but I didn't know you were such a good writer. Just. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. I appreciate that. I didn't see that coming. Amen. <laughs> Let me tell you. Um, hey, guys. All, all seriousness. If you go. Okay, we've been putting on these marathon things, no cost, free, just doing it to, to be a go-giver. But these this this young couple right here, I want you guys to go support them. I don't even say this, but go support them. There's a link in the description below. Now, and also on their website. They can get the book from your website too, right? Yes, sir. You'll link them right to Amazon. Yep. Go go get go ahead and get the book. Matter of fact, um, you will enjoy it, and and you're gonna learn some lessons. Even though we've been married 13 years, I'm, I mean, 
we still remain teachable because we said we are, we want to remain newlyweds. That's yeah, what, we that's, still that act was like our thing. we still. I don't know what this <laughs> means, but we still act like we're we're still dating. We're still making each other laugh and giggles and fun and we joan on each other and I mean all kind of crazy as if we just got married. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. if you've already purchased a copy, put it in the chat that you got yours or you got one. Yeah. If you know somebody who's in the beginning or getting ready to get married, mm-hmm. this is a good prerequisite to them walking down the aisle on this side of it before they get to the other side. And now they married and in the situation, mm-hmm. go ahead and get a copy. Yeah. One thing that I uh, have learned is what you see in your when you're single and when you're courting, um, it's going to be magnified in marriage, if it, especially if it's not addressed. Right, 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 if right. it's not addressed, it's going to it's going to be magnified because it's not going to go away. Right. <laughs> it may yeah. it may go it may die down for a little bit, but once you're in the thick of it, it's it becomes magnified. So and both male and female, no, you can't fix them. Right. Oh, I can I can I can fix them. Now I'll be able to work with that. <laughs> you better work on that thing now. <laughs> work yep. on that thing now. So Man. yeah, let me go ahead. No, I, I was in agreement. Um, I'm also, they can also be reached on Instagram at SU Ministries. Tell us about that. Yeah, so SU Ministries, just uh, Shields Up Ministries. And Shields Up. Follow okay. us. Yeah, you know, Shields Up Ministries. And, and that's kind of our Instagram page. We we have a, um, a couple things that we do as a ministry. Obviously, we, we do the mentorship, but we have something on YouTube called <laughs> Married to a Mess, um, where you can catch that on YouTube and it's just a, a a fun take on the things that the, the day-to-day things that we experience in marriage. Mm-hmm. We talk about it. Um, we talk about courtship. We talk about singleness as well. So, you know, go and catch that. It's a, it's a lot of fun. And we just let our hair down and, um, you know, have a good time. So, yeah. So we, we do that. You'll catch that with the links on at some ministries and anything else that's going on. That's on Sun Ministry. They can find that. Those, those yes, videos sir. Yes, and stuff sir. Like or, that. or look us up on YouTube, wherever you want to look us up. Married to a mess. All right. And now, um, Brittany, thank you. She says, I'm getting mine. So that's good. Go ahead and do that, Brittany. That's going to be great. Thank you for supporting Mm -hmm. this young, young couple and their ministry. And I saw somebody else say they was was going to connect with you. Oh, man. They they wanted to connect with you. I don't know if it was Brittany as well, but um, it's just so many people. I'll make sure y'all get connected. But you got their website. I'm going to put their website back up again. So we make sure we see that, reach out to them, connect with them, say, hey, saw you on the Focus Marathon. Let's keep the conversation going. Do that. Look, man, the show is called Taking the Next Step. As you leave us tonight, give us the next step. Wow. So, uh, you know, I'll leave with encouraging all marriages, but specifically husbands. Um, right out of scripture. There's a scripture um, that's not talked about often, but I think needs to be amplified. That's Ecclesiastes 9.9. So um, the scripture uh, reads, live happily with the woman you love through all the meaningless days of life that God has given you under the sun. The wife God gives you is your reward for all Mm -hmm. your earthly toil. Marriage is hard work, but when you see the fruit of God's blessing, in your singleness, in your courtship, uh, you will have faith and hope to see his love in your marriage. And so I'm encouraging everybody to continue going strong, continue seeing your spouse as a blessing and everything you experience in life. Always remember that person that you look next to every day and every night, God gave you them to get through it with them. And so, um, you know, my, my prayer is that if you sit next to your spouse, you can uh, kiss them, and say thank you for being my reward thank for you, earthly babe. toil. Amen. Hey, check this out. Look, oh, you, you yeah. that's germs, <laughs> man. Germs. <laughs> germs, <laughs> germs, man. Germs. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. You are welcome. Welcome. That it, it does make a special, it's a different kind of gift. Go ahead and get it. Thank you, Miss Nelson. Amen. Yes, Josh. Josh Rewards, LOL, is my gift from God. Amen, love it, love it. Amen. Hey, look, if this is your first time coming out to check out the Focus Marathon, we're doing this marathon for 26 days. We're in day 17 right now. 
If this is your first time here, you know what, and you like this kind of content, this type of type of material, it's going to keep coming. Yeah. It's going to keep coming. Even after the marathon, we won't be doing every night, but it's going to keep coming. <laughs> uh, go ahead and like this page, like the content and subscribe, subscribe to yes. the channel. So you don't miss anything. Like this video and share this. Well, share as many as you want, yeah. but particularly share this one because we're talking about this tonight. And if you all don't know, uh, Brother Josh and Sister Anastasia, they just uh, set the stage for, for this conversation we're having around marriage. They gave us such a good foundation. They're handing the baton off tomorrow night to Re Regina and James Cooper. Whew. Listen, y'all need to come back because we're talking about marriage and longevity and marriage for the long haul. How do you go 26 right, right, plus right. years? Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah. So make sure you come back because if you want to, if you're not married, you want to be married and you want to be successful in your marriage, doing your marriage God's way, you want to hear some of the nuggets, not chicken nuggets, but not those great nuggets. nuggets and gems are going to drop. And you want, if you're not married, implement what you just heard tonight as well. If you're in a marriage already, how can you maybe turn things around or how can you strengthen your marriage as you go forward year after year? Make sure you come back. All right. Subscribe, y'all. Hey, Josh, Anastasia, y'all are the bomb diggity. Thank you so much. Bomb diggity, man. You know we love you guys. We're going to get out there to Texas just to hang out and bum out with y'all. Just hang out and, you know, y'all can y'all can take care of us. We're going to put our foot up. We got it. <laughs> All right, look, hey, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see y'all tomorrow night. Same bat channel, same bat time. This is Antonio and Karen from the Focus Marathon. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, now, take care. Josh, you hang out with us, okay?